Evet kanka bir saat. Yeah, okay, sure. So let me just uh, do a small introduction. Uh, I'm sure most of us are really aware that uh, this week we'll have uh, someone else doing the introduction. That's Abu Bakar, who's here with us, and that's what we will be starting from now. So he'll just take us through the challenge of what we'll tackle this week, and I'll uh, be sure to ask any questions if you don't understand. So over to you, Abu Bakar. Uh, we can just start. Okay. Uh, thank you, Anastasia. Uh, hello, hello everyone. Let me know if you can hear me clearly. Uh, <clears throat> can can you guys hear me? Okay, cool. All right. Uh, just as uh, Anastasia said, uh, I am Abu Bakar Alaro. Um, I will be doing the introduction for this week's um, challenge. But before we get started, I would like to know probably in like two minutes, three minutes to understand how the journey has been so far for everyone. And, um, you know, what you hope to get out of this session. If you can unmute, that's, that's perfectly fine. If you can turn on your video, that's okay as well. Uh, anyone willing to start? Yes, Martin, please go ahead. All right, uh, just for my from my end, it's been quite um, it's been quite engaging. There are so many things that I've gotten to learn from uh, the Ten Academy. There is so many projects that uh, we are working on, and there are so many. Uh, new technologies that are emerging. I think that's also one thing, the reason why at times the the concepts get a bit more complex from one batch to the next is because the emergence of new technologies. Yeah, so uh, it's been learning a lot uh, and I want to believe that all this is for the benefit of uh, having a smooth journey in the career. Yep. Cool, thank you. And um, what are you hoping to get out of this session? I, I want to understand uh, the challenge document um, deeply and also just uh, that concept of causality. Uh, it's something a bit uh, new to me. So I want to learn uh, on yeah, just how the entire thing. Okay. Thank you, Martin. Anyone wants to follow up with Martin? You can unmute and just say your name as well. Yeah. Is it okay, Abu Bakar, if I randomly select you want um, how many? Maybe I can just randomly select. From yeah, that works as well. Okay, so let's have um, Matilda. Hello, good morning. I hope you're doing well. I hope, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so your question was about um, how I find the training so far, or did I get it wrong? Yeah, that's about it. Okay, so it's been pretty intense for me. Um, I have been learning so much, and um, I'm learning so much content within a short period of time and expect, being expected to deliver has been quite something for me. But um, by now I think my I have kind of kind of a bit um, gotten used to the to the rhythm. And yeah, I'm looking forward to this week's challenge. I have no idea um, how to go about it in exactly, but I'm looking forward to learn more again this week. So yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you. Cool. Thank you for that. Um, thank you very much, Martin and uh, Matilda. Uh, it's nice to hear your voices as well. And then it's nice to um, learn about your experiences in the So Far Intern Academy. I believe this is um, week eight. And um, I'm sure there's still more to um, uncover as you uh, progress. 
Right. Okay. So let's um, go into the um, introduction for this uh, week's um, challenge. I will try and present my screen now. Uh, let me know if you can see it. Can you see it? Okay, cool. All right. Um, so uh, this week's challenge is about um, causal inference. Uh, specifically, we want to understand uh, what it means um, to actually have um, a model that says um, uh, someone would survive a particular attack or not, or someone would have uh, cancer or not, or the type of um, cancer that the person might have, or depending on the use case that you try and um, apply to it, causal um, inference um, try to um, answer the questions of why do we have this, and it helps us to understand um, the reason why um, a model is actually giving us this output. Uh, also, uh, in causal inference, we try to uh, ask the question like, um, why am I the one introducing this challenge to you this week? Um, why are you listening to me talking about uh, causal inference? Or why, are you, why have you enrolled in um, 10 Academy Batch um, 5 training? And many others, um, why? Just to um, understand um, the reason behind it. And uh, majorly the way the um, introduction for challenges usually go is um, we try to go through uh, the documents and then if question arose, then we try to like um, answer the questions. All right. Um, is this the first time you're seeing this um, causal inference? If you are entirely new to it, uh, please raise your hand. If you have some experience with it, um, type in the box. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, all right. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, Samuel, do you have um, some experience with um, causal inference before? Have you worked on it? Heard about it before? No. Good. All right. Um, let's hope I do justice to it. Okay. Um, in here, in the business requirement, as you know, the the common frustration in the industry is about um, getting um, insight from um, tabular data. And we have a lot of um, tabular data these days. For instance, your playlist on Spotify, your uh, sales data for um, e-commerce, your customer data for um, marketing platform, and many other things trying to um, portray or give you insight into probably customer journey or um, customer churn or trying to um, understand um, how you are doing in terms of revenue or finance. These are all different kind of um, data that um, exist in um, tabular format. And it's kind of um, hard to get like um, insights out of um, this um, data. There, with the new um, tools that has, that has been developed, it's not it's getting relatively uh, easier as we progress. But we still have some um, questions that we can't directly answer, um, answer from a tabular data, for instance. Um, what will happen if I have the price of my um, product? Uh, which clients will pay their debt only if I call them? It's um, generally easy for saying, like, it's generally easy for um, you to intuitively say, if I have the price of my product, then you get more customers, but you can't particularly answer um, how much should you like, um, you know, reduce the price of your um, product. So you say half that you get one particular customer or a certain number of um, customers. What if what you did was just um, remove probably 25% of the price of your um, product? Would you still be able to get that? The say I mean the exact um, numbers of customers that you have when you um, you know remove half the price for the product. These are all questions that you know you can give to your data and you expect um, answers. But with the help of um, casual inference, we are able to infer some of these um, um, answers from 
the um, data that we have. And by the end of um, this um, project, I hope you'll be able to do something similar as well. Um, some of other questions is like, uh, which clients will pay their debt only if you call them? You know, it's possible that some um, clients you would need to like call them before they actually pay why some is they just like need a certain reminder probably send a message to them so you if you need to like um uh, do a, a, like an optimization where you only call when it's needed and you send message when it's needed then you are able to like reduce the cost and you know get the uh, better part of the um, deal um, Judah Pell is uh, one of um, prominent um, researchers, especially in the um, causality um, research space. Um, he, he, he has um, developed um, a theoretical um, framework that helps to um, deal with um, this. And um, we are still like a little bit far from like um, integrating it into uh, machine learning. You know, in machine learning, we have um, different algorithms that we train and then build models with it. But in um, causal inference, it's not just about training the model. It's about understanding what each feature of a particular uh, observation data or a particular data uh, contributes to the um, results of the model, the output of the model. Um, casual graph is a uh, central object in the framework mentioned above, but it is um, often unknown, subject to um, personal knowledge and biases, and loosely connected to the um, available data. Just to answer that, it's like not all data can actually, um, not all data, we can perform um, casual um, inference on all data. There's, there are some data that are entirely um, useless when it comes to trying to um, build inference from um, from them. So the main objective of this week's um, project is going to be to perform a casual inference tax using the PERS framework. Um, we the, the second bit would be to infer the casual graph from observational data and then validate the, um, the graph. And the last bit would be to uh, merge it with uh, machine learning with um, casual graph. Just as I have mentioned earlier, we are a little bit um, far from um, integrating causal, um, causality into um, machine learning. So if you are going to be doing something similar to that this week, you know you are um, either working on the next big thing or you are doing some amazing work that you can actually be proud of. And um, most of the project you have been working on is has been amazing, but this is another uh, amazing thing that you can go on and do them probably uh, put your name on that global map, right? Um, the first bit of this, which is like um, using the Paris framework to perform causality is a bit um, straightforward, like it's easy to do. And um, the second and third part, you, know, you need to like um, do some um, analysis on that. Um, any questions so far? Yeah, just uh, a clarification. Uh, there's at, at the moment there's no one who has um, like integrated machine learning with causality. No, no, not not like it has not been integrated into uh, machine learning. It's not um, widely um, accepted. So it's either used in like um, private projects or um, used as a personal project that people are still developing in the research lab or in. Um, research that you're still writing. Uh, okay. Um, any other questions? Okay, uh, to answer Michael's um, question, uh, feature important states, um, it's like performing, um, um, uh, giving a particular um, value to um, each uh, feature that is present in each um, machine, I mean, that is present in the model that you have um, used. But um, when you do, um, but before you can actually calculate um, a future um, importance, you know, you have to like have built the model first before you can actually uh, compute the feature importance, right? But in um, casual um, inference, you are able to like use all of the feature at once, and then it, you are able to then understand how much um, each feature is actually contributing to the output of the model. So you don't necessarily need to build the model first before you get the, uh, the um, feature importance of each uh, feature. Uh, 
Do you get that, Michael? Okay. Uh, let's proceed. All right. Uh, so now let's talk about um, the data. Uh, the data that we're going to be working on for uh, this project is going, we can get it from um, Kaggle on uh, the PCI um, repository. Um, this data is very common, I would say, and um, most uh, machine learning um, projects, especially the Hello World to machine learning kind of project, use um, this data. It's not um, relatively large um, data, but do we have uh, hundreds? Yes, Rafa. Hi, Apple Parker. Hi, everyone. So just before you proceed, I'm sorry to just interrupt again, but if it's possible that you um, again explain the casual answer, the inference in just like one sentence, what it, what it would be like. Yeah. Um, you want me to um, explain casual inference in one sentence, is that what you said? Yeah, kind of summary. It's just like, uh, if I just um, get sure that what I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I get your question. So um, in, in one sentence, casual inference helps you to answer the questions of um, why do you need to do this to get this output? Are we clear? Okay. So do you have like follow-up questions to that? Um, yeah, I mean, we agree that it's like, the whole idea now it's about... Um, it's uh, about trying to um, understand um, what the output of this would be if you do this, you know? Like trying to understand um, if you enroll in an academy, does that mean you have a bright future or something like that? Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, there are many other things you could have um, done apart from, um, you know, studying casual inference or pertaining in this, I mean, doing this particular um, project, but you chose to do this um, project. So what would be the um, outcome if you, you know, do this project or if you have um, performed other action, what would be the result? And it would be like a sequential steps for the I mean, I don't get how the algorithm or the machine will get that. Like, um, how the algorithm works is um, something that um, we might actually um, talk about later on. But it's another thing that you would be um, researching for that as you mm -hmm. continue to like work on this project this week. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, let's uh, move on. If there are any other questions, uh, let me know. Um, so this is um, describing what um, the data uh, looks like. Uh, you can get the data from this source or this source. Uh, the data is about uh, breast cancer diagnosis and uh, prognosis via linear um, programming. I'm sorry, um, it's highly recommended uh, you, I mean, the data is collected. Uh, I mean, the data is collected from this um, research and then you can read um, this research just to have a better understanding of how the data was collected and um, which um, um, features were like um, selected to be um, included as a part of the final um, data set that you are going to be working with um, this uh, project, okay? And then in the features we have, um, I'm sure features and uh, data set and all of these things are not entirely uh, new things to you. And here we have uh, the ID number, we have uh, the feature names basically, and they have like what they mean on uh, what they represent. But if you go through what we have in the research here, you would have a better understanding of um, why this um, this uh, columns were selected. Um, you can also like um, attribute um, casual inference in, into like it's still um, depending on um, some human input because uh, we we are con we have like this constraint of limited um, features that we are currently using to build a, a specific model. And these features were originally like um, selected by human. So there is still a possibility of um, human error into it, which is one, uh, one of the uh, problems of why 
um, casual inference has not been fully integrated into uh, machine learning just yet because we are still like um, we are still responsible for um, bringing in this data and then you know using um, casual inference on this um, data All right so there's the part two that um, you know researchers are still trying to like figure out and um, trying to like understand, right? Um, the mean standard error and the worst or largest uh, mean of the three um, largest value of these features were computed for um, each um, image. You will understand that um, from the research that um, they're trying to like um, or um, they are trying to like understand the the you know in in trying to uh, understand um, cancer you get like an image area and then you um, pick out um, different uh, size, length and all of that to tell whether this is the, um, it belongs to this type of um, cancer or the other type of uh, cancer based on like um, the sizes. Uh, so for instance, few 3 is uh, mean radius, few 13 is radius um, standard um, error and few 23 is um, worst um, radius. Um, all future um, values are recorded with four significant um, digits, which it's like um, trying to bring it into one scale and not um, over uh, simplify it or um, overestimate um, its value. And this is another thing to consider in terms of the human error. How would we know that if, for, for instance, we have like five significant um, digits or six or probably two or one or no significant um, digit, what would have been the results of, you know, the output of um, whether the person has uh, this type of cancer or the other type of cancer, right? Um, expected outcome for this um, project would be uh, modeling a given problem as a cursor graph. So if you are given a, a problem, for instance, um, uh, what would be the result? I mean, who would um, emerge as like the next best um, researcher from this particular um, project um, what would the uh, what would he or she need to uh, to do in order to you know um, attain that um, level uh, also you yeah, um, expected to um, um, improve your skill on a statistical modeling and inference extraction so based on when you start um, applying the um, casual um, the casual um, algorithm you are able to um, use intuition to um, infer how much of um, importance this particular um, um, feature has on um, this problem statement and also building uh, model pipelines and orchestration. Uh, this is um, one thing that is highly um, used in the, in, in the industry right now. Uh, and then in the knowledge that you're supposed to gain from this is similar to the skill you're supposed to practice, statistical analysis, hypothesis formulation and testing. Here you are able to ask the question of what would be the outcome if um, the worst radius is at this range or what would be the um, outcome if this particular feature is at this range? You know, like you can um, manually do some of these things. Like for instance, you can manually test your hypothesis and say, so I have selected this part of the data and um, this is the uh, minimum uh, radius that I have and this is the maximum radius that I have what would be the uh, diagnosis result if I test um, this particular um, uh, data on the um, algorithm? You can do that, right? But you are bounded with uh, to, I mean, you are bounded because you have limited time and um, you, you, you are not able to uh, test all of the uh, range that we can possibly have in um, numbers, right? You can have 7.1, 7.01, 7.02, and it's just a lot, right? And that's one of the reasons why um, we have um, computers to help us to do uh, some of these things um, today. Now in the competency mapping, I'm sure this is not new to you. Then Academy um, has um, 12 competency that you know we uh, each particular project is um, focusing on. And um, I will not be reading through this because I believe you should be um, aware of this. And um, basically you, what you'll be practicing the most would be software um, development frameworks and um, the Python uh, programming um, 
um, practice, as well as collaboration and communication, because you're going to need a lot of this. Uh, probably, I mean, you're not working in a group uh, for this project, so it could be that um, your colleague is working on this set of um, data that he or she has like identified, and then you're working on another set, and then you can, you know, share knowledge at um, the daily standup or in a, in a separate meeting that you guys um, have. Um, and as you know, um, group work is um, encouraged for uh, in um, Ten Academy, and um, we have um, um, this explaining um, the, uh, the the score that you you get for um, performance that uh, you put into you know into this um, uh, project, and in in the um, instructions of what you're supposed to um, follow through. Um, it's basically like explain what you're supposed to do at each stage and then you are guided on um, what comes when and um, how you're supposed to um, do it. But then you are allowed to like um, go out of the box because this project is still relatively um, valid and new in the industry. And um, the more um, um, you can explore, the, the better it would be um, for you, right? Um, so in the in task one, you're supposed to uh, conduct an exploratory data analysis, uh, which will help you to understand how each feature um, you know, relates to other feature and uh, which feature is, um, uh, is significant in terms of building um, a machine learning model and every other things like that. But here, the focus is not entirely about building a model. It's about um, understanding each um, feature that you um, have. Now, um, another um, human error that we have here is um, the scaling part. Now, if you decide to um, scale uh, each um, data, then they would have um, different um, impact on uh, the uh, model. So you never know if scaling or not scaling would be the best thing um, to do, right? It's something you can also um, test out. All right, um, and then you're supposed to um, complete task one as that, and then in task two, that's where um, casual um, actually um, happen. Here, you're supposed to um, uh, split the data into um, training and old outset. If you um, recall, uh, it's mentioned here. Uh, where is it? Right. Uh, it's mentioned here that you're supposed to infer the casual graph from observational data and then validate the graph. So the observational um, data that is mentioned here is your training data, and then you can um, validate it on your um, test data. And uh, splitting um, data shouldn't be uh, new to you. All right. Uh, any questions so far? All right, um, and here we have um, in tax two, which is the probably the easiest part to do. Uh, you're supposed to uh, split the data, um, create a casual graph using um, all the uh, training data, and then guys um, get the insight. And this will be uh, considered um, the uh, ground truth that you have. So this is what will be like your basis for all the um, inference that you're going to be getting out of um, the data. So after, probably after you um, create um, the casual graph, you you um, figure out that um, this feature with this feature gives the best result, or um, this feature with another feature gives like the worst result and all of that. This will serve as your ground truth and one of the things you are going to like um, report. And before you start um, creating a new um, casual graph, and, uh, and based on um, um, increasing um, um, fractions of um, the data, like um, here probably you started with 60-40, um, uh, so you have your training data to be 60% of your data, and your test data is like 40%, and then you start like increasing it, and then you see um, how the uh, graph is um, changing. And this is one thing that you would um, have to like um, explore um, as well on your own and then come up with, um, you know, uh, I mean, with your collaboration and communication skills and then you um, be able to like um, figure out uh, this is what I have done and this is how you can probably um, improve it. And uh, the comparison can be done with um, Jacquard Similarity um, Index, measuring the uh, intersection and the union um, of the graph. Um, 
I, I did not um, prepare um, like an example to show you how you would um, do um, Jacquard similarity index uh, by you know measuring the intersection and the union um, for this. But um, I was working on um, uh, providing a link that explained this in, in detail and um, probably by at the end of this, I would um, send it to um, um, Anna and then she can um, share it with you and you'll be able to like um, understand how to actually uh, do this. Um, after reaching um, a stable cultural graph, this stable um, stable state will be something that you detect from your ground truth. Nobody's going to um, tell you this is stable or not, but from your inference, you'll be able to tell, okay, this, this is my own um, stability state. And you are able to then select um, variables that point directly to um, the target. This means that you are able to then say, uh, these are the um, features that actually um, impact the decision of um, whether someone, um, whether that particular patient is um, as this kind of diagnosed or on or not, and um, you are able to then uh, move on to train one model using all of these uh, variables, and um, another using only the um, variable selected by graph. This is you building. <coughs> This is you building um, a machine learning model using um, all of the variables that the that the data has, and then using um, only the variables that the um, casual graph that you have done in tax three, uh, I mean tax two point three, and then you are able to then compare what what you have, right? And then measure how much um, each of the models um, overfits. Uh, the ODOT set created in um, step one. I'm sure the uh, the term overfitting and on, um, on underfitting is not entirely new. If it's um, new, please um, ask the question, and then I can um, explain it to you. And then you'll be able to like um, fine tune your model and you know get um, the best out of it. And now this is the um, separate part of. Um, integrating the cultural graph with uh, machine learning because what you have done here is you're trying to like um, what you've done in task three here is you have tried to um, understand um, which of the features that you have in your um, data uh, which which of them would actually contribute to um, giving the best output for um, the um, data and from the, um, by the best output i mean like the correct um, output uh, for the data and um, here you would be um, measuring um, the, um, the, the, uh, the difference between the model that you built using only the selected uh, features by your cultural graph and um, using all of the um, variables. It's possible that um, when you use all of the variables, you have a better results compared to when you use the one in your cultural graph. It, cultural graph does not mean it's always right. It could be like a, a human error, probably when the data was um, collected or your sampling rate is, uh, is wrong. It could be like a, a, a lot of um, reasons, but if you do get something um, out of um, ordinary to share it, such that uh, probably it's something worth um, investigating uh, further. And um, yeah, this is what is planned for it. And then we have just done the um, introduction to um, the um, casual graph. Um, any questions? Is there any part of the, my explanation that you want me to retake? I think we have a question on the messages, the one from my phone. Oh, yeah, I didn't see. It. Uh, what is ODAL set? Is it like, yeah, basically your ODAL set is your um, test set, right? Um, it could be like um, you doing um, a CV, but I won't allow, I mean, I won't advise you go directly to CV. You can just use the um, treat test uh, split that Scikit-Learn offers and get the test set from that and uh, build your model um, on that first, right? And then test it. Uh, I can talk a bit about um, choice of um, models. Um, can you expand shit on what you mean by that? Uh, choice of models in terms of um, what? Yes, Martin, please. Oh yeah, I, I was asking 
concerning the type of, like when doing the modeling, uh, for example, I think this is a classification problem to classify whether it's a benign or a malignant cancer. So like which type of classification models uh, can we like narrow down to? Um, I won't advise you um, narrow down, but I would advise you to start with um, logistic uh, regression since that's like the um, LO into classification kind of uh, modeling. So you are able to um, understand how each actually um, affect um, uh, the uh, model, and then you can um, scale up in terms of um, using a bigger uh, model, like um, uh, decision tree classifier. Okay, um, using um, decision tree classifier and any other model you see fit. But it's like um, the bigger the model that you use, the uh, uh, the higher the time of um, computation would be, and then probably the better the result would be, but it's not, that is not like um, something that happens every time, right? So, but I would advise you to start from logistic regression and then you can move up the ladder that way. Do you get that? Okay, cool. Um, Kevin says, is it a good habit to do casual inference for every machine learning project? Um, depending on, um, say, what, what you need to like um, answer at the end. So if you want just a direct model and then you are, uh, you are time bounded in terms of when you're supposed to deliver, then I would advise you go straight to building the model and then you communicate to probably the stakeholders and um, be like, there, there might be ways of which you can improve the performance of the models if they give you enough time to, you know, go through um, casual um, um, inference and then um, get some, um, more better um, insight and then do it. But if if it's something that you're practicing on your own and to get like a better understanding of what casual inference actually is, then um, yeah, you should um, explore um, casual inference on um, every model that you build. You're welcome. Um, on, on the um, thing that I, pro I said I was going to um, share, uh, I'm still working on uh, completing um, that part, but once it's completed, I'm going to share it with uh, Anna, and then you can um, have access to um, what, uh, you know, how to actually do uh, this part, because I think this part might be uh, one important thing that you need to, might take some time to figure out, right? But pending that time, please start um, exploring, because um, I think it's only um, one week, probably that's like six days, right? Um, any other questions? Is it clear? Can I ask my question now? I need to yes so I can proceed to ask my question. Okay, cool. Yeah, we will um, wait for any um, other um, questions or a new, um, yes. Um, I was going to ask uh, um, um, a question of, um, uh, because one part that I actually did not explain is how um, um, correlation affects um, causality and nobody actually talks about um, that as well. So I'm just going to ask, um, um, is correlation um, the same thing as um, causality? You can raise your hand or mute, type your answer, whichever one works, but don't remain silent, please. Uh, yes, Martin. All right, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, so I will respond by saying that uh, correlation is more on observational data, while causality is not. Uh, correlation is what? Is more, it's deal, it deals more with the observational data, uh, but uh, causality mm -hmm. does not uh, focus on 
observational data as such, it focuses on, uh, it could be external, it could be any other type of data, but not uh, mainly focusing on observational data. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, okay. Thank you. Just before I say if it's uh, mentally correct or not, anybody has like a something similar or entirely different from what uh, Martin has shared? Um, yes, Rafa. Yeah, I'm not really sure um, if I got Martin answer correctly, but but I would say that uh, correlations show that uh, those there are some variables that are related to each others, and uh, somehow there is a relationship between them. But it's not very clear what that relationship is. But in causality, we see that. Uh, Causality means that if this happened, then that will happen. So I have a clear understanding which one will happen first and then what's next will happen according to that one. So that's how I get it. Cool. cool. Thank you for that, Rafa. Um, I think um, as um, correlation is no more on um, observational um, data, it's um, correlation can happen to like, um, any any kind of data it does it does not necessarily have to be um, observational um, data and uh, causality can also um, um, like we can also have um, causality on um, observational um, data as well so um, so there there is that and um, I think that the, the um, explanation that um, Rafa gave which is um, um, correlation is about um, relationship that exists um, between um, uh, the different uh, uh, features that we have in um, the data. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that what you said, Rafa? Yes, that was what I said. Yeah, so we have um, the relationship that exists between um, these features is what um, correlation um, actually means, but um, causality goes um, out of that. It does not actually uh, based on the um, co uh, relationship that exists between them. It tries to um, find like uh, if um, if this is the case for this um, part, what will be the output for the next part of that? I, is that clear? And um, as what uh, Michael says, like um, correlation has um, direct impact on um, causality um, inference. Um, partly that that is right, but not in um, all cases. It could be that um, the what you are inferring is based on correlation. Sometimes it's right. Sometimes um, it's not. But in many, in very um, rare case, we have. Um, the um, the correlation leading to uh, our um, inference as well, yeah. Yeah, only if it's like related to the um, target variable, then yes, it has like that uh, the that um, line that says that uh, you you can uh, like you can infer this based on the relationship that this particular feature has on your target. Um, Johannes says that um, correlation is more generally relationship uh, concerned not specifically on um, causation why causality talks about cause and effect um, relationship I'm not sure I understand what B for slash N means what does that mean Johannes oh between variables yeah you're correct Johannes so yeah, that's like um, the one question um, that I have. And that leads to the fact that when you are um, selecting, um, when you're like inferring um, this um, inference from your um, features, you should take um, correlation, you should be thinking about um, correlation as well. Are you selecting these features because you think they are correlated or because you think what you have um, inferred is actually like um, right or what the graph has given you is right, okay? Uh, I wouldn't say um, correlation answer the question is this um, important because it could be that even if this um, um, future and um, feature is not um, directly um, correlated to 
uh, the um, target or any other um, variable you, you can still like make sense of the feature or it could still be like an important feature that you know gives you um, the best model that you want. I'm going to stop presenting now. And um, I, th I, still, I think we have about four minutes. So um, any questions? Okay. Uh, in the correction, doesn't No, no. Yes, you're correct. Um, Daisy, yes. Uh, Biniam says that um, correlation tells us how variables change relative to one another. Positive correlation means the variable increases and decreases together. Causality means one variable cause change in um, another. Uh, I'm not sure I get what, what you mean by causality there. But uh, in your explanation for correlation, yes, that is absolutely correct. Um, but for causality means one variable causes change in um, another. Okay, yeah, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see there's like um, a lot of um, uh, explanation on correlation and causation. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you are in uh, good hands and I, I believe you'll be able to like um, complete this um, project with ease. So I wish you um, all the best. Um, Anna? Okay, Rebecca, thank you for that. This is uh, all. I think the training is a bit so the part C didn't uh, go through is just the same. Yeah. Yeah. Submissions for the week as normal from Wednesday and Saturday. A uh, little bit more details to mention the challenge for the week. And references as well. Start reading the references. They are also included. Okay, so in addition to what Abuka has said, I hope you understood just what causality is, especially beyond correlation, what we have just told. Uh, the end of the session. If you have any further questions, you can go through the references, come up with a list of questions. We'll have another more detailed QA this afternoon. And uh, it will be led by the the team that actually proposed the challenge. So we'll do it more QA for that for that session. As always, thank you, Babakar, for the session. And uh, if there's nothing else from the trainees, I think we can just end our discussion. Yeah. Thank, you. Right. thank you guys for having me and i wish you the best take care okay bye